Rebuilding a Bernack Vulcan model steam engine toy. This is part 26. Machining the original crank web after drilling out the old shaft. Making a new crank shaft from 3 sixteenths of an inch stainless steel. And fitting it to the crank web using Loctite 603. Pressing the parts together and cleaning up the outside edge of the crank web, which was quite badly marked and damaged. I'm also going to need to make a spacer between the main frame support and the flywheel to stop it touching the boiler. I'm using the metric side of the steel rule because for this measurement it is difficult to use the imperial side. Here you get the general idea. Now I know how thick a spacer I have to make to fit in between the frame and the flywheel. Time to remove the engine frame from the boiler. It's only loosely fitted anyway. And the bolts that are temporarily used are a bit too long. I opened up the holes in the bearings to take the 3 16 of an inch diameter crankshaft and here I'm deburring the ends of them. The problem is I cannot deburr the inside of the holes using the twist drill. So instead I'm going to use a needle file. Besides I need to do a bit more than just deburr the inside edges. I'm using a needle file to clean up the entire area because what I'm going to do is soft solder some phosphor bronze bushes in place to act as bearings. Here is the original crank web, crankshaft and crank pin. And as you can see, not only is there physical damage to the edge of the crank web, the crankshaft is very thin and very bent. I'm going to remove what is left of the red paint that was applied to this engine when it was made in the late 1940s. This red thing is the screw top of the can of some cellulose thinners. I left the crank web in the liquid for quite a while, but it didn't really remove it very well. The crank pin on the crank web is fully serviceable and a good fit in the piston rod. Very shortly I'll be spinning this up in the lathe, but before that I thought it was a good idea to file the back of the crank pin where it had been riveted over. I'm going to use my Myford ML7R for the next operations, mainly because it's very close to where I'm working and it is not going to tear my arm off, although don't get me wrong, if you caught your fingers in this chuck you would need hospital treatment. First of all, I'm trying to remove the paint on the rear of the crank web using some Scots Brite, and this was fairly successful. This crankshaft is bent in various places along its length, and when I push the crank web all the way up to the chuck, as you can see, even at this point, the crank web doesn't spin true. Before I can drill out the existing crankshaft, I need to make sure that the crank web runs true. For this job, I'm using a hide-faced hammer. It's quite heavy but I'm being very gentle with it, and it took a couple of attempts, but eventually the crank web ran true enough for the job it's doing. And now, starting with the centre drill, I'm drilling out the crankshaft. After using the centre drill, I drilled out the crankshaft using a 5 30 seconds of an inch twist drill. And after this, the brass part of the crankshaft in this component disappeared forever, and very conveniently stuck to the drill. The next part of the operation takes a little bit of thought. How am I going to get this disc to run true in the chuck jaws? I'm using the tailstock chuck to press the crank web into the main chuck. Then I nip up the chuck using the chuck key. And now I can work on this and it's running accurately. I'm drilling the hole in the centre of the crank web 11 64ths of an inch, which is one imperial drill size less than 3 16ths. After this part of the job was complete, I cleaned off the red line that was left on the crank web using the point of a needle file and gave the back of the crank web a bit of a polish up using some wet to dry sandpaper. This is 400 grade. I removed the crank web from the chuck and fitted the crankshaft and here I'm turning down the end of the crankshaft to be a good engineering fit in the 11 64 of an inch diameter hole in the crank web. I'm getting close, but it's still a little bit oversized. I do not want this to be an interference fit, because I intend to use Loctite 603 retainer to fit the crank web to the crankshaft. The crank web in this state is now exactly 11 64ths of an inch in diameter. I didn't want it to be an interference fit into the crank web, so I'm using some emery cloth to reduce it slightly. The very last part of the turned crankshaft is an interference fit. That is so the crank web will locate accurately on the crankshaft, 
but there's enough room in the rest of it for the Loctite 603. In this clip I'm facing across the front of the crankshaft to make sure that this part fits exactly in the crank web. I'm removing the sharp edge with a piece of emery cloth. Here's a small bottle of Loctite 603. This is an anaerobic adhesive. When you starve it of oxygen, it cures. In this clip, I am applying a generous amount of Loctite 603 to the end of the crankshaft. As usual, I am applying slightly too much, but too much is better than too little. I've made it very obvious in this clip that the crank web is not a tight fit on the crankshaft. You always have to leave a small clearance for the 603 to do its job. Because the very last part of the crankshaft is an interference fit, I'm using the tailstock chuck to push the crank web all the way onto the end of the crankshaft. I left it like this for about 20 minutes to give the Loctite some time to cure. Then I withdrew the tailstock chuck because I need to machine the crank web. It's damaged and it's a bit rough. To clean up what look like hammer marks on the crank web, I'm having to remove more metal than I would like to really, so the diameter is reducing. But that's not a problem, the knocking that you can hear is as the cutting tool removes the hammer marks that were around the edge of the crank web. At some time in the engine's past, someone has been hitting this part with a hammer in an attempt to straighten it. Once I'd machined away the hammer marks, all I needed to do was remove the sharp edges. And for this, very, very carefully, because don't forget there is a crank pin spinning round very close to my hand, I'm removing the sharp edges. Don't forget, 90 degree, perfect edges are very sharp, even with or without a burr being present. To get to the other side of the crank web, I pulled it out of the chuck slightly. And even at this distance, it is still running, true enough for the job that it's doing. And that's the job done. When I refit the new crankshaft and the remachined crank web to the piston and rotate it, it moves very freely all the way round. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and as always, I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.